All right, so I wanna make a quick video going over this little guy right here. This is the Bally Buckle. This is my original take on a Balasong carrying device that features a lot of things that I wish I would have seen on some traditional Balasong carrying methods. So the way that it works is you have this pre-tensed loop here. Take a Balasong of choice, in this case my Sentinel. You aim for the loop and then push it all the way through. Here I'm holding the buckle, and the knife is effectively retained. And if it's a latchless balisong, like the Sentinel is, and a lot of modern flippers today are, keeps the knife closed in your pocket, and it does so in a very minimalist approach. Very simple, very effective. So you'll also notice here, I have this fancy looking clip, which I call the locket clip. And the reason for that is you have this little hook right there. And what happens is when you go ahead and you clip this onto your pocket or your waistband, that little hook actually keeps the belly buckle retained and on your person as you go and pull the bow song out from the buckle. And since the loop here is pretensed, as it sits there in your pocket or your waistband, that loop will be ready for you to reinsert the bow song when you are no longer using it. And there you go. The way that you remove the belly buckle is you press down on the bottom portion of the clip here, and you'll see that it's cut in this L shape which allows it to flex in this motion. And like I said, that hook engages with the fabric on your pants. So what you want to do is when you push this back, you're disengaging that hook and you want to pull away from the fabric that's caught on that hook and then up and off of your pocket or waistband. I have a video demonstrating this on my Instagram so if you go over there at Jimpy Designs, uh, you can see that in action. But the main purpose of this video, aside from going over what the belly buckle is, I also wanted to have a more in-depth look at how to disassemble and reassemble the belly buckle in order to highlight one of its other main features being it is self-repairable and very customizable. So the remainder of this video, I will be going over how to take one of these apart, put it back together, and go over some of the customization options you have with a belly buckle. So first thing I wanna clarify, this is a personal belly buckle, this is my personal one, it's also a prototype. So it's a little bit different than what you will receive when ordering a standard model. This here is an example of a standard model. So you have the buffer plate here. You'll notice there's no cutout like on the prototype here on the left. And it's also a black buffer piece, whereas the prototype is a white buffer piece and the elastics are two different colors. Standard is black, my custom one is OD green. So this gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with customization. Um, you can swap out the elastic here. If your elastic ever wears out, you can replace it yourself. Once I show you how to disassemble and reassemble it, you can swap out the buffer plate for any color, any material, whatever you'd like to do. And since the buckle itself is titanium, you could go ahead and refinish it. You could anodize it. You do a lot of crazy things with, with the belly buckle when it comes to customization. So those are just a few things. 
And I hope that when people get these in their hands, they will um, get go crazy and come up with some really cool combinations. But uh, with that aside, this is how you take one of these apart. So if you look up here, we have the loop here where the tag is being looped through. And what you want to do is you want to just pull this back a little bit and then give it a little pull. And when you do that, you're going to be shortening that loop where the ballast song would otherwise be held. And if you make your way over here, you'll notice that this loop is being caught up on this little prong here, which you're going to go ahead and remove it from. So there's that retention prong. That's what keeps the whole thing together. And when you open up that flap, you'll see a few things. You'll see the backside of the tag that says Bally Buckle, designed by Jimpy, made in the USA. We don't need this for the moment, so we can just take that off. And you'll also see we have some slack here from the elastic, and you can see how the buckle is looped, how that all works. So to disassemble it, you're just going to shimmy out the elastic from all of the, the uh, slots here in the buckle. So what you do, what I like to do, is just kind of push it through and like shimmy it. If you have a hard time, you can always take something small and thin like a Allen key or a pen or a pencil and help you get those loops out. And then you're just gonna keep going. So if we pull this one out, It's actually this loop that keeps the buffer plate against the buckle, so might as well just take that off as well. Pull the rest of the elastic through. Grab the slack on the back here, and then pull that through. And now, we have our four components. We have the buckle, we have the buffer plate, we have the tag, and we have our elastic of choice. So at this point, you have it disassembled. You could then go ahead and replace the buffer piece here. You can mess around with anodizing your, your buckle. You can replace your elastic, like I said, if it gets worn or you want to change out the color. So if you don't like the OD green or something, you could put black on it or whatever you can find. As long as it's one inch wide elastic, it should work most of the time. Uh, and this stuff is really cheap, so you can probably buy a couple colors, maybe like five colors for like 10 bucks if you look. So that is how you disassemble the ballet buckle. So now I'm going to show you how to put it back together. So to put this thing back together, you're going to start by picking up your buckle. And you're going to want to loop it a little bit different depending if you're a lefty or a righty. It works either way, so even if you loop it as a righty setup, it still works if you put it in your left pocket, for example. However, this is just the way that I like to do it, and I find it to be the most comfortable and intuitive. So, if you are a righty, you're gonna hold the buckle in your hands where the clip is facing to the right. If you're a lefty, you're gonna hold the buckle to where the clip is facing the left. So pretty self-explanatory. Then you're going to take your elastic. This is a nine and a half inch piece of elastic, I believe, which is a little small uh, for most ballast songs, I feel. The ones that, the production models, the elastics that I ship with those, I think are nine and three quarters. Yeah, nine and three quarters inch long. So if you were to go and buy your own elastic, that is about the size that I would cut it to for most applications. It may be a little bit longer, it may need to be a little bit shorter depending on the size of the valley, but that seems to be like a, a good starting point. So what I do is I take the elastic and I fold it in half. I take my buckle, since I'm a righty, I'm going to be aiming for this slot right here. Now if you were a lefty, you would aim for the same slot, but it's just turned around. So lefty, that's your starting point. Righty, 
this is the starting point. I like to pinch the bottom of the elastic and then feed it through that first notch, first slot there. And then once it's poking out the other side, I just give it a pull. And I even out the slack here, make sure the two ends are just even. And then I pull it down a little bit. Now, to gauge how much slack uh, to leave behind, I usually use these top slots here as like a reference. So I like to aim for this middle bar here between these two slots. So if we look, it's just about right. So I'm going to leave it. Next thing you're going to do is take the loop again, pinch that corner, and now we're going to be aiming for the next slot up here. So pinch that corner, feed it through, pull it through. Now don't go all the way because now we have to reinstall the buffer plate. So we take the plate, feed it through the loop, and then just press, press it down against the buckle so that it's flat. And at this point you can check and make sure you didn't mess with your slack here. I'm actually going to pull this down a little bit more. Yeah, so that looks about right. So what I like to do is kind of press down on the slack and then place my finger here for support. And you're going to take the loop and just pull it the rest of the way through. And when you do that, you've now retained the buffer plate. Now this won't go anywhere. You can come back here and kind of give this a little tug if that shifted a little bit. But now we're going to loop through the next slot up. Again, pinch that corner, feed it through, and then you can just pull that one all the way through. Now at this point, when you feed it through this last slot next to the prong, if you go ahead and give the elastic a pull, you'll notice that the slack no longer wants to move because now the elastic is anchored. So it is not going anywhere. It's not going to slip on you. It's not going to unravel when you don't want it to. It's going to stay in place. We got one slot left here, so we're going to take the corner of the elastic and feed it through that last remaining slot. Pull it through. Again, don't pull it all the way through because this is actually the loop where you're going to put your battle song in when you're all finished. Now, sometimes when you get to this point, you'll notice that, let's see if I can simulate this. You'll notice that one of the layers on that loop is going to be smaller than the other. And that's a really easy fix. One way you could do that is you can just pull up like this, place your finger inside that pocket, place your finger inside this loop give it a pull and now you'll see those layers are flush with each other and it looks nice and neat. So I'm going to pull this loop out a little bit more and this is where we put the tag back on. Now the tags are sewn in a way that creates this little bit of fabric on the inside. I like to loop the tag so that that extra material is against the back side of this loop. So it's when it's folded over, that extra material is going to be underneath everything. So I'll show you what that's going to look like. So you'll just kind of push the fabric away and then loop that elastic through and then shimmy it on there. And there you go. So you can See it right there, and that's where that extra material is. It's against the back side of that loop. And now, what you want to do is make sure you have enough material here to loop around this retention prong. So, you're just going to pull that over like that. Very easy. And at this point, you'll notice that the slack is a little off and everything is kind of crooked. So, the way that you fix that is you just pull up, you're going to tuck that extra material underneath that loop and then also shimmy it more towards the clip side so if you were lefty doing this it's the same principle so you just be again the clip would be on the left shimmy it that way 
just like that. And then to finish it off, you just take your finger, put it inside the loop, and then give it a little pull. And once you, once you do that, the elastic is now retained. I like to flatten out the tag area here, make sure everything's nice and neat. And you have your loop, and the two layers are pretty close to each other. It's nicely done, very neat. And there you go, you've now reassembled your belly buckle. And just to test and make sure everything fits correctly, I'm gonna take my Sentinel, slide it on, holding the clip, not cheating, I promise. Quick shake test, retention's very good. And now your valley buckle is ready to go. So that is how you disassemble and reassemble the valley buckle. So I hope that was informative. And if you happened to pick up a valley buckle, hopefully now you have the knowledge to navigate the platform efficiently and you shouldn't have any issues. But if you do, feel free to message me on Instagram at Jimpy Designs. Uh, I'm pretty responsive to DMs, so if you have any questions, just message me there. If you want to pick up a Bally Buckle or anything else on my website, again, head over to my Instagram. The link in my bio, there's a link tree, and it has all of my links, including the one to my website, as well as a few others. So, again, hopefully this helped. God bless.